It is a beautiful day here in Tasman. Would you look at this? This is winter here in New Zealand. It doesn't feel like winter. These are the best days. The dogs are all chill. Bees chill. Poe's having a drink. Pace is chill. Bruno's chill. Now, I don't know if you saw the vlog the other day, where I, yeah, it was actually the last vlog, where I came to the box and I was like, shit, Poe's not in there. I couldn't work it out. You may have seen her jumping out the top, and putting her head out the top at the beginning of the video, which I didn't see, but I saw later on when I looked at the video. She broke this hair off, making it so she could actually jump right at the top. And that's exactly what she did. And I was like, I couldn't figure it out, I thought I'd gone crazy. Oh, Bruno's chewing on an old pigskin down there. Anyway, uh, welcome to the snap vlog. We had a brilliant day yesterday. I took this guy out, Tony. Tony is a good bastard, he comes from Tarkaka. And in one of my vlogs I was saying that I'd struggled to get firewood that year because I was in hospital and stuff, and I did not say that to for anybody to offer me free fire, well that wasn't my intention. And uh, he drove his truck all the way from Takaka to deliver me this amazing firewood. You just touch this stuff with a match and poof, it, it's in, got so much sap in it, it's old man pine and gum. It just, it just explodes when you touch it. I mean, it's incredible. And the house is really hot inside now, so that's the best firewood I've ever had. But when you consider this bloke, you know, he's a, 33 year old dairy farm worker, he works for another farm, he doesn't own the farm himself, he works six days a week milking cows and he's got three young children and a wife to look after and those guys don't make a lot of money and they work bloody hard and he's got one free day a week and he gave it up to drive his tired old Colorado that's got like 500,000 kilometres on the clock and tired leaf springs, he drove it all the way over here to deliver some firewood, I had to do something in return so I took him hunting that afternoon, that was yesterday, and uh, he got his first pig, he got his first boar, he stuck it, got down there and he had a fantastic day, and I also took my main weight out, Wayne as well, Wayne is a, um, uh, an old mate from 45 years ago who took me on my very first hunt, and he dropped off some possum which I'm going to cut up the dogs in a minute. So today I'm taking away I think three or maybe four young boys today, I'm not sure we've got one pending still. And we're going to take them hunting. One of them is having a few problems in school, so we're going to have a talk to him about that. And uh, hopefully we get some blood on our knives, but whatever we do, we'll work up a sweat and have some fun on the hill. It's too cold down there, so I'm going to get back in the sun before I do. I'll feed these chickens while I'm talking to you. I want to tell you a bloody good story about young Wayne, who I've been looking after. I don't know if you've been following that on my uh, channel, but Wayne is a, a bloke. Not the, not the Wayne that gave me the possums either, that's another Wayne. And there's, speaking of, this guy, mate, he just gave me a whole bag of really fat possums for dog talk. Look at that. Good food. No, this is young Wayne I'm talking about. He has been going through hell. And I've been sort of looking after him, but we have finally got some resolution. And I won't be having to look after him anymore. So it went like this. I was very, very tired on, well, a couple of days ago. And it was 11.30 at night, and the bloody phone rang, and I thought, oh, jeez. I was just about to go to bed, and I was, you know, you know when you're really stuffed? Well, I hadn't had a lot of sleep the night before, and it was young Wayne. And I did say to him, you call me any time you need help or something. So the phone goes off, and he's in bits, his head's wrecked, and he's like, man, my father's had a breakdown. He's just had a complete meltdown, and, you know, I really, I don't know what to do, and mum's upset, and... We're sitting here and Dad won't talk and there's real bad energy going on. I don't know what to do. Now I enforced, well, I won't say enforced, but I made a, a meeting happen with Wayne and his dad a while ago because Wayne needed to get stuff off his chest. Wayne was abused by his father when he was younger and his father wouldn't validate that and wouldn't admit it. And You know, he just tr treated Wayne so badly every time Wayne tried to bring it up and that meeting didn't go well at all. Well, I thought it didn't go well, but actually it did because... His father was processing that over the few days after that and his father had a kind of a breakdown filled with guilt and remorse and sadness at how he had been and rightfully so because he'd been a, a terrible father. Terrible father, he'd been an abusive father. 
it's not that he didn't love his son, but he'd also he'd abused him. That's what I gather. So anyway, I rock around to their place. By now it's quarter to twelve at night, or closer to midnight. His mother made me a nice cup of tea, a very nice cup of tea actually, which was needed, and we all sat down and talked. And when I was there, you know, I don't take any prisoners. Like I said, we, well, we're going we're to sort this out, get it ironed out, and once and for all. And his, his dad broke down and cried. I'm, ne I'm never a good singer, grow man cry. I don't know. I never know quite where to put that. I just don't handle it very well. There's nothing wrong with that, but I just, I don't know. I've never been very good at handling it. But I did say, right, now's the time for you to, to talk to, to, to Wayne about, you know, what's happened in the past. And, and, and so you guys can put it behind you and move forward. And a beautiful thing happened. He stood up and he wiped his tears away and he looked at his son and, and he said, these two words he said I'm sorry and then Wayne like you could just see a weight go off him and then his father shook his head and went like this and looked at him again he said I'm so sorry son I'm so sorry I hope you'll forgive me and man it was just a moment of the whole room like everything stood still and Wayne didn't say anything he just looked at his dad and then tears streamed down his face and his father cried and I tried not to cry <laughs> <laughs> we human beings are crazy fucking creatures aren't we so it was beautiful man and, and first of all the the dad stuck his hand out to shake his boy's hand because he's old generation he doesn't hug his son and his son he, he shook his hand and then the, the handshake became a great big full on hug that went for a long time they patting each other's backs and it was like fuck this needed to happen. So they have a lot of work to do, you know. Wayne's still on medication for depression, but I can see now that my work's done. They can move forward, you know. His father has admitted his mistake, his wrongdoing, and his, he's validated what his son was always feeling about, you know, the abuse that he, he, he had to put up with as a child and growing up. And he can move forward. So I don't think it's ever too late for resolution but I always think it's better if it can be done sooner you know and, and Wayne's in his he's in his 20s so he can go forward now and I think that there's going to be some come out come out dog getting very close to the electric fence B get off there B get out of there you got the electric fence I warned you that wasn't meant to happen hey you keep away from there good boy it's okay <laughs> shit Bloody electric fence, come here boy, come here, it's okay mate, come on, it's okay, it's okay, way you go Poe, I didn't say you Poe, all the dogs pack around, it's okay mate, you know, he's going to learn the hard way about electric fences on the farm, calm down, sit down mate, this is uh, Patrick's dog, he's uh, going to leave for the day because he can't hunt it, so it's a sibling of pace, we've got young Jody. how you doing mate, can you see it? That's a bloody soft handshake. Got a sore arm. Oh, you got a sore arm? What have you done? You have got a sore arm. What's happened there? Sorry, bud. Fell off my bike. Oh, fuck's sakes. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's, that's okay. <laughs> Out of there, B. B just got a zap off the electric fence, so he's a wee bit uh, not sure what's going on. Get out of there. B, come. Take that dog out of the truck, mate. This is young Patrick, who I first took out when he's 11 now. He's a big fucking ugly bloke. <laughs> and he's, he's, he's so busy working, he can't even come pig hunting today. He's letting me, his dog, well, he's not lent it to me, he's left it to me so I can do some training for it. Because yeah, you're working too much. That's okay. Well, you obviously are working because I know you enjoy a hunt. You've got a bloody. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking good day for it, too. Look at the snow on the top. Yeah, I know, mate. It's bloody cracker. It? Yeah, we got a boar yesterday, eh? Just after you phoned. Yeah. Oh, sweet. How big was that? Oh, I don't know. 50. It was a bloke I took out. Sit down, Poe. Yeah, it was the first uh, piggy he'd ever got, so it was bloody good. Oh, sweet. The guy dropped me a load of firewood off, eh? He just turned up here, so I thought, well, I'll take him pig hunting, so I didn't. It was like, good, he went over the pig on the back of his truck. Oh, sweet. Yeah. This kennel blew down in the one, so Patrick's helped me get it back up. So what you got to do is you've got to get the arse end of it inside that V. You understand there, Jody? what's going on? Hook into it, Jody. Oh, is that arm too sore for your lift, mate, is it? Mind your hand, don't get your other hand jammed. Oh, yeah, that's it, but, you, but you've got to get the arse end in, inside first, so rock it back a bit. There you go, now you're talking. You can't do fuck all there, can you, Jody? You, you're a bit sore, mate. Are you hurting too much? You all right to come for a hunt? I'll be fine. You sure? Yeah. 
Yeah. You've got your bit, bit stuffed up. So you can lift it. Back. Yeah. Patrick's doing it all himself. You think Jody's a bit sore, eh? That's the way, Patrick. Now you're talking. No, you need to need to lift it. And, oh, you got in. Good boy. Well done. Awesome. Oh, it's in my elbow. Is it? You've really yeah, stuffed yeah. it. Oh, it's not broken. So what happened? Uh, <laughs> Come off on the downhill? I was doing a wheelie. Oh, were you? Yeah, I was getting um, something from the car. I was carrying the keys in my hand. Oh, shit. I got stuck between the brake lever and the bar. Oh, mate. I went over the back. You're always hurting yourself, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's broken or not? It's not broken. Just sort of right, whacked, whacked it. Okay. Hey, okay, mate. See you later. Okay. Yes, thanks for that. No worries. I'll you see know. you later, Jody. See ya. Um, are you going to drop my... Um, you gonna drop my dog off back yeah, to mate. mine? Yeah, I'll drop him off at home right. on the way back through. Just send us a text when you're coming back, Jody. Yep. See ya. See ya, mate. Busy man. Yeah. So, Jody rooted his hand yesterday and he hasn't told his mum and he's come to me with a hand he can hardly use. It's like it's buggered. He says, no, it's okay, it's not broken. You can't fucking do bugger with it. So as far as health and safety goes, I'm not really supposed to be taking young fellas away in the scrub that are injured. So what do I do? I leave them here or I drop them back off home? What do you reckon, Jody? Don't know. You don't know? He says he lifts the possum out with his good one left hand. <laughs> How the hell are you going to function if we get a big boar? And you know you're going to get there first because you're the fastest of all the boys. Actually, Cuzzy might get there before you today if he comes with us. You get down there, you've only got one hand. How are you going to deal with that? Do you think about that? No. <laughs> Jeez. This is what i got to deal with. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take off the... Uh, we'll leave the head on for Bruno, actually. Just take off the claws and the tail about there and put everything uh, separate. That's the one. So pick up each bit that comes down once you've got it and throw it in the wheelbarrow. I'll get a container for that. That's the one. So what we're going to do is we're just going to chop these off here. Okay, we're going to chop them there, right. that, that section, and then we're going to split that there once we've chopped it. Yeah, you're not ready. No, I don't know. Keep the other hand away, mate. You're not coordinated with that axe at all. You're going to have to use your... You're struggling with the hand, aren't you? Slightly. Yeah, mate. Okay, no, no, no. That ain't going to happen, brother. No, no. You're going to hurt yourself. I'll do this. I'll do this job. Yeah, Bruno, have a quarter of a possum. Yeah, eat up. Good boy. He'll munch the head up first, you watch him turn it round. See, the smaller dogs can't break a possum up like that, that's why I have to cut up with the axe. Right. But Bruno just like chomps a whole lot, he'll eat a whole possum. He'll eat a whole possum, a piece of piss, no trouble at all. That head was just an appetizer for Bruno, that quarter. He wants a whole possum, don't you, Bruno? What's that, eh? You want a whole possum, don't you? Hey, what's that? Hey? Eat up, eat up, away you go, you can have that mate, away you go. I have dyslexia so I understand where he's coming from, Jody also has the same thing and you know often people with dyslexia really struggle with basic reading skills and understanding um, simple diagrams and instructions but we also can think outside the circle and I know this young man to actually be very dynamic, out of the 21 people now we've got that I'm taking out He's in the top three, he's in the top three, he's only three in the A team, but he's, he's failing miserably at school and, and you know, he's at the point now where his parents are saying, well, it's either school or you start working. And he's just hit me with a, a business idea that he's got that I think is absolutely innovated, um, next level, brilliant, and I, I've never actually seen it around the country. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's his idea and it belongs to him. And I think it could work, but he's going to come up against three things. First thing is he hasn't got enough money to finance it. That's every business has got to have capital. And one of the reasons businesses fail is they, they start off with not enough capital, capital. The second thing is his bookkeeping skills are going to be absolute crap, aren't they? Yeah. It's not a laughing matter because, you know, you could have this brilliant idea, but if your bookkeeping skills are crap, you're going to fail. And a lot of people in New Zealand, they fail at their business because their bookkeeping lets them down. Because the inland revenue takes no prisoners. One thing I've learned being in business myself, you've always got to pay your tax. 
You've always got to pay your rent and you've always got to pay your tax and you've got to pay your bills, you know. So if your bookkeeping's crap, you, so so there's a, there's, a, there's a hurdle for you to get over. And the third problem I see is he, he doesn't have any reach. Like he's, he needs all his customers for this amazing idea. He's got this concept that could really work, but he's got no way to reach out to people. So we're talking about this and he's still in school. Now I'm saying something a lot of people are going to hate me saying this and they're going to they're going to like say what are you talking shit clay but i don't think education is always that important i think these innovative ideas and these creative ideas that people have outside of the normal thinking are more important and can lead to more wealth not just financial wealth but wealth in life and it's something this guy's really passionate about we're talking about and if you do what you're really passionate about then it's no longer a job it's something you just can't wait to get out of bed in the morning and make happen and as the day goes on, you know, you, you grow to love it and it thrives and eventually the money comes. But there's an old saying, I read this from a book from Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I had to read that book when I was a sales rep years ago for General Motors or a company working for General Motors. And it said this, it said, production minus sales equals scrap. Meaning that your great idea or anything you produce is worth absolutely nothing if you can't sell it. So we're going to think how to get your market. So he's right at this point in his life where he's trying to get to level one at school. Yeah. And he just wants to get that and then you want to leave school. Yeah. Because school's not working for you. I'm saying if you can get level one, great. But if you can't, it's not the end of the world, mate. Because right now you're struggling. Yeah. And you're, you're upsetting your mother and your father. And you're probably upsetting a few teachers at school. And that's no good. You're actually better just to get the hell out of school and start being productive doing what you can do and that means starting off working for someone else and then slowly implementing your idea which you're already doing a little bit hey eh? you're already working one day a week yeah yeah i've taken this guy out in the bush enough times to know that he is not scared of hard work he's a bloody hard worker <laughs> he earned his stripes last time carrying a bloody heavy pig out of a steep gully that you know most men would struggle with and he's only 16 is that right he's 16 yeah. yeah and he's he's not like a big lad he's you know he's a, like me he's a bag of bones but no, he works hard so we're going to go out hunting later on today. I don't know how we're going to function with that fucked hand, but uh, we're going to, something's going to happen. Chopped up possum. And we're not going to give you too much because you guys are hunting in another couple of three hours. But you've got to have something in your tummy. Hey, fuel to burn. Oh yeah, pace has always looks better, doesn't it, eh? Good dog. Just a bit more. There we go, mate. Into it. A couple of lamb's hearts and some pork, some salted pork. What can I do for that for lunch for Jody and me? Hit the pan, chop the sucker up, chop his mate up, done, leaf lard, rendered down kidney fat from wall pig. Yeah. Season the crap out of it and give it a good mix up. Carefully place some pan. Lovingly stir up, mix up. Salted wild pork, chopped, carefully added to our heart. And violently stirred. Broccoli, smash that in there. One slightly old tomato, added. No, not that one, that one there. That's sea salt and seaweed. How you getting on? Pretty good. It's pretty cool, eh? Yeah. That's the hole in the wall where the rat jumped out onto Dale's bed. Right, uh, we'll eat some grub, eh? Well, this is a bit different to what your mother cooks you, mate. This is fucking real bush tucker. You're gonna love it. Gotta play us a song on the ukulele. Don't know how to play. Oh, I used to teach you. How's that taste? Good. Very good, eh? Mm. Mm. It's the only way, mate. So this guy has been allowed to get away with not eating his veggies. Like, he'd say to his mum, I'm not eating it, so he doesn't have to eat it. At my house, that doesn't happen. He has to eat his fucking veggies or he's not going pig hunting. Get it down, you. I know you're struggling. Jeez, boy, you're like a three-year-old. Come on. <laughs> Mitchell's just arrived. He's cracking up. I mean, what do you reckon? He's fucking 16 and he doesn't eat his veggies. That's going to change, mate. That's going to change. Come on, get it down, you. We're not going pig hunting to get it down, you. Get it right down you. 
Come on, oh, that's cool, isn't it? Nice veggies. I'm my vegetable, I just hate tomato. No, you can eat tomato. Technically, it's not a vegetable, yeah, yeah, right. Eat your fruit up. <laughs> Do you like tomato sauce? It's okay. Oh jeez, fussy bastard. Still has got all the sugar in it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right mate, that's dead right. So it's slightly overcast today. It's one o'clock in the afternoon, well, it's actually quarter past one now. We're going to meet uh, young Flynn in Kohatu. And from there we're going to go into some Golden Downs forestry and we're going to catch a massive, massive pig. <laughs> got to put it out there, got to think positive. Whether we catch anything or not, it's the experience and it's the fun of being out there doing it. And here comes young Flynn. So I saw a bit of a track on the map up here. I was looking at it last night on the hill. I want to try and find that and see if we can just walk the boys up it. It's right close to the, uh, the highway. Well, not the highway, but the main drag up here. Well, this is what our pig hunting's become. Sitting inside a truck with a heater going and poor old dog getting snowed on and rained on outside. And we're sitting back here like a bunch of horsies, all nice and warm in the truck. I think the chance of catching a pig now are very remote. Well, Tig and B have done a good bloody try in the snow. They've gone right down. It's come down thick. Jesus. Beautiful. Here they come. Good boy, B. Good boy. B's back out. That's Snow Boy. You seen that before? Don't know what that is there. Look at Poe. Poe's got snow on her back. Here's Patrick's dog, Tig. Hey Tig, you're the snow boy. Hey mate, good boy Tig, good boy. Hey, good boy Tig. That is so cool. <sighs> Come on, buddy. Clocking up some hardy k's on the hill. How are you boys doing? Good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Got a lot of walking to do, and it's uh, going to be dark soon. And Poe is with pace down there, 600. We're going to cross over. We're just going to wait for. Uh... Keep going, guys. I'll catch up with you. Going to wait for Mitchell. Here he comes. How you feeling, mate? Yeah. Going well. Mitchell's just telling me he's feeling really energetic. Trying to keep up. Hey, you're doing a good job, buddy. Mitchell's been on a ketogenic diet for a week now. I've got him on a different diet and he's also doing a little bit of exercise. So what's your, what's your goal weight to get to, mate? Uh, I don't know, probably just maybe 90. 90 would be good. Be good so what are you on there, 120? Yeah. So he's on 120, so have you lost weight since you started it? Yeah. How much? About 5 kilos now. So it's been more than a week then you've been on, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and you're walking way better than you were two weeks ago and I took that hunting, so already he's made big differences. But we've got to get back to the truck quick. And now we've got the hill in front of us. So I'm going to hang with Mitchell. But you've got to push in now because they're on a track on a pig and we want to get this as quickly as we can. We've got to drive around. There's no way we can get down either 600 down through that thick stuff. And there's a road right next to them. This will be the test. This next uh, probably six or 700 metres up here. Just going to push in. Do you want to take your rifle for you? Yeah. Give me that, mate. Cheers. Stay right beside me. Every time you find you falling behind, just catch up, yeah? And if you feel sick, let me know. He's been doing a bloody good job. He's done a lot of, a lot of K's today on foot. A lot of K's. Bloody good stuff. I think uh, Mitchell's pushed himself really well. It was a pretty steep hill we went up, and uh, <coughs> we had to get there quick because the dogs are down here, what, 1.3? 1.13. 1.13, right. As soon as you can get your shit together, have a look at your unit, and your navigator, or if you don't want to do it, then then uh, put Jody in the front seat, he can be navigator. And if he does that, we'll probably uh, end up somewhere in Timaru or somewhere, because last <laughs> time we did, okay. <coughs> What's that, mate? Somewhere exotic. <sighs> yeah, okay. So take some deep breaths and uh, let's get into it. The status is that Poe and Pace are right out there a long way tracking and they're not backtracking, they're still tracking the same animal. Do you know how tricky road is? 
That's what my navigator's gonna show me right now. Come on, mate, compose yourself when you sort this out. Well, that brings today's snap vlog to an end. No pig, but really good hunting and great teamwork. Fantastic navigating by Mitchell in the front. Uh, two young fellas in the back, just so fit and keeping up, and um, really good teamwork all together, working as a team. The dogs tracked off for miles and miles, and I actually literally lifted them onto the off the bank and onto the truck because they couldn't go any further. I actually picked them up; they were stuffed. We don't miss too many pigs with Poe these days, but where we're hunting right now up here in Long Gully, it's bloody hard. So if you're a pig under a local and you're chasing pigs around here and you're catching them regularly, you've got bloody good dogs. So did you guys have fun though? Yeah, oh, good fun. Did you? Uh -huh. Yeah, you mate? Yeah. Mitchell? Yes, buddy, good. Bloody good? <laughs> How many weeks have I been taking you hunting? Three now, is it the third time? Is this the third hunt or the fourth? This is the fourth hunt. Fourth hunt? Twice last weekend. Yep. And before then we and went out too, we with them with Troy. With Troy, yeah, so this is his fourth. Then, yeah. This yeah, I'm seeing leaps and bounds. Like today was quite hard and yeah, you know, he's just on the right track. He's uh, completely changed his diet. He's got zero sugar, no carbs or very low carbs. You're not eating bread or pasta no. or potato or all that stuff. No. Yeah, and you said to me on the hill today you felt energized, didn't you? Yeah. Didn't feel quite energized that last bit though, did you? That was a bit where you thought you were gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just a bit before that when we turned around and started coming back. I yeah. got a burst of energy. You did bloody good, mate. You did really good. You can be proud of yourself. I look forward to seeing, I look forward to seeing you in a few months because you're a big man. You now, now you're a big man who's overweight. In a few months, you're going to be a big man who's a strong man. It's going to be so good to see you powering up. You know, getting into that real steep terrain, alpine stuff. You know, chasing up a few tar, a few reds. Because you know you're great with your firearm, but right now your body's letting you down. And I reckon that bit of jelly between your ears is, is, is strong enough for you to stick with this diet and this this exercise plan of regularly hunting. You know, pig hunting will get you fitter than just about any form of hunting because you've got to keep going on the dogs and on the move like they were today. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, hey, that was today's vlog. Be good. Can't be good, then watch they do, Mitchell. Be careful. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> See you later. Awesome. That's cool. Right, honey, I'm gonna feed dogs. I'll see you later, okay? Bye bye.